feel like, to be honest, when it comes to creatives, like, you either got it or you don't. Like, I know for me, like, when I first started, people were yeah. like, damn, like, six months in, I'm already shooting better than people who've had a camera in their hand for 10 years. Because and you they, have the artistic eye for it. That's yes. the thing. So even, you know, with the rise of AI, with the, the, the how um, camera phones are getting better, mm -hmm. like, it's great. Like, you can get this black magic camera, but if you don't know how to use it, it's not worth nothing. Yeah, you know what I mean? True. So at the end of the day, nobody can steal my eye. I think as a creative, that's, that's what sets you apart is your perspective and your eye. Like, nobody can take that away from you. You are now watching But First Coffee. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Nikki Rump, your favorite brand photographer and owner of Shots by Nick Photography, and you're watching But First Coffee. Yes. <laughs> Finally get a chance to sit down um, with a fellow photographer. I mean, yes. I picked it up as a hobby at first. So uh -huh. what made you perfect it as a craft and say, hello, let's get some money? So, I mean, to be honest, photography really just kind of fell in my lap. Mm -hmm. um, when I initially bought my camera, it was back when I had my own digital marketing agency. I would pretty much help um, business owners create a digital footprint mm -hmm. online. So I would basically start off with their logo design. Got it. Then from there, I would create their websites and then social media. Um, the issue with the websites was when I was building them out, I could flip them out in like two days, but it would take them forever yeah. to give me the photos. And then yeah. as you know, <laughs> what is this? That's what I'm saying. Most business owners, they giving me iPhone pictures, yeah. like they super pixelated. And the people that I was serving, of course, was in the black community. And as you know, um, stock imagery is not diverse at all. It's hard to find good imagery yeah, of true. like black people on stock photography. So I was like, let me go ahead and just buy my own camera so I can get to the bag quicker. But long story short, I bought the camera and it collected dust. <laughs> you know how that goes. But fast forward, I actually moved from Nashville to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, I had just got out of a Bad little breakup, my little seven-year saga, and I just wanted to really grow and expand my business network. So I came to Atlanta, joined the Urban League, and literally, I would say one of the first events, um, the first person I met, his name was Chris. He was like, what do you do? Telling him, you know, my background is actually in digital marketing, so I was doing working digital marketing at that time. Okay. He told me that he was an actual a photographer. Got um, it. Yeah, come <laughs> to find out, though, he really worked at at and but he leads with his passion. Don't tell his feet. Don't tell his feet. <laughs> but I appreciated that. But yeah. once he told me he was a photographer, I was just like, hey, you know, what type of camera do you use? Mm -hmm. He said Nikon. I said, oh, my gosh, me too. And I was just like, can you just show me how to get off of automatic mode? Mm -hmm. So fast forward, we linked up at Piedmont Park. He showed me how to use my camera, and then we just kept on linking up, and then so there you, you go. It. Yeah, he literally taught me all the fundamentals of how to use a camera. And me as a businesswoman, I saw I could throw a brand on it and get to the money. So I shot. I didn't know this. Have. I'm already a fan because you're uh -huh. a TSU alum. See, so you period. know, um, I'm gonna be biased about this. And I'm, I'm love, uh -huh. I love Nashville um, uh -huh. because you know it's it's like a little hub for entertainment too. It is. A lot of people don't see that, but it is. Um, so that that Nashville moved to Atlanta, and then you got your feet wet uh -huh. doing some photography. Uh -huh. Now, okay, a lot of people say I picked it up. It's it's nice to do, but it is your actual career. So people have to call you and say, I need photos done. Do you have people you turn down and you... So correct. So I'll say with me, I still do have a full-time job. So I okay. still, um, I'm still a digital marketer. I do that. But of course, I'm trying to level up so I can get out and do this full-time. Um, but for me, yeah, it's really all about marketing and advertising your business, really mm -hmm. figuring out and niching down to who it is that you actually want to serve. Got it. Um, okay. Of course, when you start out, you kind of shoot everything because you're just trying to get a feel. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Okay. And you're just excited, like, damn, somebody actually finds value yeah, in my work. So let me true. shoot this baby. Let me shoot this <laughs> birthday. Um, but now, you know, I'm to a point now where I've shot a lot of things mm -hmm. and I really wanted to niche down and focus on one thing so I could um, present myself as a thought leader or expert in a specific niche. And when you okay. do that, 
you're able to charge premium prices because now you are truly solving That's a problem true. to a specific target audience. So now it's kind of like you're having two jobs. So you said you do yeah. photography <laughs> and a marketing agency. So how do you feel like the marketing agency is helping you um, basically run that photography business? So I definitely, I think having a corporate background definitely helps you out a lot because mm -hmm. it teaches you the importance of having like workflow, automation, just being more attentive to details. Whereas I feel like most creatives, that's the thing that's missing is that mm -hmm. business acumen. They kind of just uh, would prefer to just like show up and shoot. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but they don't know how to actually run a business. Um, that's true. Yeah. So I think my background, because a lot of people don't know, I actually have like two master's degrees, one of them being an MBA. So for me, um, I'm more of a business minded person yeah, and, and I just happen it. to learn yeah. how to take photos. So why not, <laughs> why not pivot into something else? or become a head of something in another company as a marketer? Why say, okay, I love doing this, let's make some money? Uh, well, I mean, I'm still doing that. So okay. even in my corporate job, like I'm climbing that ladder, like I'm in a manager Okay, so you're position. not saying, oh, I don't want no extra work. Yeah. <laughs> you actually are still striving to become. That I am, okay. but at this point, I'm more about flexibility. Because honestly, if I wouldn't have like pivoted and really just been honing in on my business, at this point, I should be in a director role. Like I turned that Got position okay. down because um, with more money comes more, <laughs> more responsibility. <time> too. <laughs> and I like to be able to work remote and only be responsible for myself okay. instead of like a whole team because again I'm trying to level up my other businesses on the side mm -hmm. so but I do appreciate that corporate check because um, <laughs> <laughs> I see it almost as the interest-free loan because it, it, it enables me to really be able to hone in on my business mm -hmm. because I don't have to worry about paying bills and stuff so the money I make with shots my neck I can easily just reinvest it back in I can okay. take more risks because I don't have to worry about how are my bills going to get paid now, being like a self-taught photographer, uh -huh. Uh -huh. how do you have more respect for the craft? Because people say, I got a phone, iPhone 14, I don't need a photographer. <laughs> how do you how uh -huh. do you get that respect and how do you appreciate it more that you now you learn what goes into actually being a photographer? Um, I think honestly, I feel like at the end of the day, when it comes to being a creative, it's not like the corporate world where they want to see you have years of experience. Yeah, I feel like to be honest, when it comes to creatives, like you either got it or you don't. Like I know for <laughs> me, like when I first started, people were yeah. like, damn, like six months in, I'm already shooting better than people who've had a camera in their hand for 10 years. Because they, you have the artistic eye for it. That's yes. the thing. So even, you know, with the rise of AI, with the the, the how um, camera phones are getting better, mm -hmm. like, it's great. Like, you can get this black magic camera, but if you don't know how to use it, it's not worth nothing. Yeah, you know what I mean? True. So at the end of the day, nobody can steal my eye. I think as a creative, that's, that's what sets you apart is your perspective and your eye. Like, nobody can take that away from you. Now, do you feel as in your marketing um, standpoint, you as a female trying mm -hmm. to say, okay, this is, I'm bossing up doing this. Uh -huh. Do you feel pressure from other people? Do you feel like you have to create a, a niche just to survive that market? Um, do you think like speaking on the photography side, on the photography side, like yes. what are the cons of like niching down? Is that kind yeah. of what you're saying? Like um, a lot of, a lot of females will say, I only shoot women. Or, uh -huh. or they expect because you're female, you like kids. A lot of people don't want to be bothered with kids, See. male or female. So do you feel like <laughs> you are under pressure? Like, oh, she's a female photographer. She can handle that. See, that's the thing. It all goes back to your marketing. Yeah, so when true. you go to my website, my messaging, it speaks to my tribe. I'm mm -hmm. talking to the people who I want to work with. So you go to my website, you're not going to find any pictures of babies. <laughs> like, you're not going to find... Don't ask me about your ugly <laughs> baby. <laughs> because I ain't taking her pictures. Yeah, so I think, again, it goes to how you present yourself mm -hmm. and how you market yourself. You go to my feed, you're only going to see the content that I'm trying to push or that I want to shoot. So now, I think, Will you ever get in front of the camera? Um, I'm actually, you know, it's funny that you say that because actually my birthday is next week okay. and <laughs> I told myself that I do want to get more in front of the camera because even now, um, I think a lot of people resonate with my brand because they see my face. They see your face. You know what I mean? I, I am. I'm not out there doing photo shoots and stuff, <laughs> but I, um. You doing reels though. Yeah, I'm going to do my reels. You're going to see my vibes, my personality and yeah. stuff like that. But I do want to do more actual real shoots of myself okay. just for me to get more comfortable in front of the lens because I do feel like if I'm able to get me comfortable from the lens it'll make it a lot mm -hmm. more easier for me to 
and do that for somebody else, like one of my clients who might not be as comfortable in front of the lens. But luckily, I've been blessed. The majority of my clients, they be some baddies. They be ready. You know what I mean? They just need a little direction, but they be ready to They serve. say ready. <laughs> well, knowing what it takes to do the shoot, um, uh -huh. so I have much respect because when I do it, I'm just like, you know what? Today not going to work. But um, how do you feel like that plays a role with saying the different pivot we have with the social media and film and movies like what will be the next niche for us because visually things are growing like you said with ai mm -hmm. um we know how to play around with color like what do you think you see for like the next the couple of years that may that may be like okay this is where photography is going to take us to be honest, I feel like like that personal branding, and honestly, for the black community, this is like something new. Like a lot of people I work with, they'll just come to me like, I need photos, but they don't really okay. understand how important like personal branding is because now we're in a day and age, especially with uh, millennials being like the top consumers, like we're currently top consumers. Um, it's not good enough for you just show us your product. Your product, like we want to know who you are from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to sleep. <laughs> like like we, are very, you wake up. <laughs> like we are very, we are very intrusive. My breakfast, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Why do you feel that is? Because it's like <laughs> no attention, not attention is being towards <laughs> even school life. When I see these, yeah. I'm gonna say these people <laughs> put into like a different wave. It's always about, hey, they, they want to see me. See you do what? I'm trying to figure out. Because that's the thing. Like for us, we like to feel connected. A yeah, lot of millennials, the it's the connection. Is that because we haven't had much time outside with people? Well, I wouldn't even say that because that would be like the Gen Z. That would be the next generation or those these pandemic babies. But it still got to be some withdrawal <laughs> because you're like, hey, out there. It's like touching the glass. On I the think, I don't know. I, I just know because just, just looking at data and stuff, like okay. we're more likely to buy into companies who have a social cause. Like we're right, actually okay. like, we actually care about that type of stuff. <laughs> so I think it's when we watch people, it's kind of like, I want to know how you move. I want to know that if I'm investing this money in this person, like you're actually a good person. I don't I just want to see the logo. Change. I want to see the person behind the exactly. logo. I want to make sure I'm not giving money to somebody I don't agree with. Exactly. That's that's I, what it is. I can get behind it. <laughs> that's I, what it is. I can honor that. Even if you got to watch somebody in their rollers, wake up. I, that's what if that's what you need to do like, to say, I you trust go. you. Maybe I'm going to have to start doing more of the videos. Hey, you really you guys, do. I got crushed about I. Good morning. Because it's all about humanizing <laughs> your brand. Like, people want to be able to okay. relate. Because when you honestly think about it, when we make a purchase, it's usually an emotional purchase. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> being, being in business, uh -huh, uh -huh. we transparency is kind of hard for people <laughs> that aren't used to being transparent. Uh -huh. And I find that um, females, maybe even females of color, we don't have to take the same approach in our relationships. Mm -hmm. um, so do you find yourself getting out there on social media and saying, I'm, I'm this. And then when you're in a relationship, cause you talked about the seven year stretch. Yeah. <laughs> that it becomes like, mm, you don't know me like that. Huh? Well, I would say, I mean, it is definitely, and I, especially coming from a female background, mm -hmm. it's easy for us to lose ourselves because at the okay. end of the day, I feel like we're givers and nurturers by default. Like Got we're it. always putting everybody else's shit. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're just all, especially black women, that's just what we do. Got you know it. what okay. I mean? Like, by default. So it's easy to lose yourself. Um, in this, it's just so important that you have to put yourself first. Like, sometimes you need to just take a break okay. and really focus on self-care and um, mental awareness and mental, like, you yeah. really need to have a therapist, especially as yeah. an entrepreneur. You got to take care of you before you, you go do. service somebody else. Exactly. Like, like, you can't pour into anybody if you're empty, like, period. Well, I already told you, I'm a fan because <laughs> you were the TSU. So you I don't need to see no yes, reels, yes. no videos, but I appreciate it. And then for the uh -huh. camera goers out there, what is your go-to camera? So for and lens. Okay, okay. Look at you. <laughs> I'm picking. So for me, um, I'm a Sony A7 III shooter. Okay, I just got that. I, right. Okay, I would say for me, um, go-to lens. I love that 2470. Like if I could only have one lens to take with me, it would be 2470. You can do por um, portrait shots. You can shoot events. Like it just gives you all the length, the focal length that you need. So I would say. If I could only have one, I would roll with my 2470. Okay, and then one more thing. Let's say, okay. what's your, what would be your dream shot? So if you had the camera of your dream and then they said you can go anywhere, what is your dream shot? Just the dream shot? Yeah, like I, I have I to shoot. have a picture of this. I have to be responsible for the person they said she took that picture. Um, 
Dang, that's a hard one. <laughs> I was like, you know, most people ask what celebrity. I know what celebrity. Well, what I celebrity want. would you like to shoot? <laughs> I want to shoot. Uh, shoot? I want to shoot Kofi. Okay. Yeah. Mm, you was crushing on. And Kobe. I was like, he can be the coffee in my cup. I'll drink that coffee. She's allergic to that. <laughs> she allergic to every coffee but that coffee. <laughs> exactly. Well, I appreciate it. I love that you enjoy the crab and uh-huh. that you know that it takes still. You have to sometimes you stay at, stay at your job yeah. until you get that together, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then it's not easy for sure. But if you have the eye and the talent for it. watching But First Coffee.